Hi guys, Luton here, and welcome back for another episode of Below the Line. Last week I was asking the question, should games unlock all guns for players from the outset to prevent distraction for players and assist in balancing out weapons, preventing a need to add in unnecessary filler weapons and remove stupid assignments for unlocking? We'll look at your comments on that shortly. One early point to make today guys, this footage you're seeing is courtesy of Level Cap. I went and asked Level, got his full permission. We often borrow footage from each other as producers now and again if we need to, if it's something we don't often play, or if it's content we don't have. I very rarely play as a pilot in Battlefield, it's not something I've ever really been that interested in, and so today I'm just borrowing some footage from Level to illustrate the topic that we are talking about. However, this doesn't reflect on Level's playing style or anything like this, it's literally just background footage. First up, the question for this week's video, FPS Air Support, should it be AI only? Let's hear some of the talking points. Now, playable air support has been around in FPS games for a long while now, and air support allows for a more immersive experience where players on the ground will hear and see and feel the effects of close air support. Specifically, we're talking about often fixed wing aircraft and not helicopters. I actually think often we need more transport helicopters. I might talk about that on another video and why it's good and how it benefits everybody. Recently though, with games like Postscriptum, Day of Infamy, Insurgency, Sandstorm, all switching towards more AI controlled air support, many games which have featured player controlled air support can end up in a situation where those players end up spending more time fighting each other than they do on the ground. And it's obvious to note this tends to be much more for games like Battlefield and Battlefront with their scaled up player counts. Still though, Postscriptum choosing to go for more squad leader or commander requested actions made me think much more about should air support actually be just request orientated. It's well known that having multiple pilots in the air at any time not only removes players from the ground, but it's also a dangerously imbalanced force multiplier. A skilled ground unit can be dangerous to be sure, but the speed of movement and other gear limitations means that they can usually only create a certain level of impact to the overall game, and it's usually of course localised around them. A skilled pilot, however, can imbalance an entire game if they maintain total air superiority and then reap ground forces over and over who are just unwilling or unable to counter. Now, the obvious counter argument, of course, just get good. But that's really a simplistic and weak argument. It doesn't take into account the whole picture. It's also, you know, the kind of thing that you're going to say if you're the person who's reaping everybody else. What we want to be thinking about is ultimately what kind of game do you want to create? To me, if you want to have ace pilots in a game, fine, no problem. But it's got to balance to where those players can be actually taken down. The analogy of ground to air units again works pretty well here. A highly skilled ground player can usually be overwhelmed or pinned down or just caught out by lower skilled enemy ground units. But highly skilled pilots usually don't have that. And this is because air superiority has a lot more to do with metting the mechanics and being able to escape danger quickly. Player controlled aircraft in FPS have long been strangely either two things, either totally disconnected from what's happening on the ground to the point of being irrelevant, or I remember for example in long periods on Battlefield 3 where players spent most of the game circling one another, everybody remembers this, and round and round and round you go, you end up maybe having a few minutes to engage ground targets when they eventually kill one another before they went back to the endless circling charade. It gave very little purpose to them actually being in the round at all, and all it did was just diminish the amount of units you had on the ground. The alternative is you might end up with a pilot who spent so many hours grinding that he's in like the top couple of percentiles of those players who focus on air combat. He's got his meta skills to perfection and any medium skilled pilots that are gonna to try to counter that are probably gonna have a few attempts and then just give up and go and play on the ground. And it leaves the ground forces to just get truly reaped for the rest of that round. Now look, most of this obviously applies to Battlefield more than any other FPS, but it's a game which has long included air support in one way or another. And thinking more generally, imagine with any upcoming FPS, should it go down the route of player controlled aircraft? And the reason I thought about this was because in the recent post scriptum videos where we had the Spitfires coming in, but people then found out, oh, actually they're AI controlled and they're called in on request. I saw many comments from people going, oh, this is BS, I wanna be able to play as a fighter pilot, blah, blah, blah. And it, so it made me think like, yeah, you know, it's not just Battlefield, there's other games which of course wanna bring in air control combat but they're making different choices and which of those choices is better. Should the detail of balancing the aircraft be the real key to the puzzle or should it be a commander or squad leader that enables this? Allowing ground commanders to call in limited air support as many FPS games are now featuring, even Tannenberg, the second kind of iteration of Verdun, has the ability to control point sectors and then with those sectors you get special abilities like spotter planes to call in. COD of course always had that long featured AI air support whether it's an airstrike or air helicopter coming in. 
COD, of course, for a long time has always featured uh, AI air support, whether it's airstrikes or helicopters. Now, if you want to ensure players remain engaged on the ground, perhaps AI events are more suitable to ensure balance for all. You could even have random mid-air combat happening between AI just to still give that simulation of air combat, low flying stuff just coming through. Because basically much of the time, that's what you tend to see even when the human players are just playing them out on their own game, oblivious to what's going on to the players on the ground. It seems to me I'd rather have AI requested CAS, but that if it must be player controlled, it's got to be strictly balanced on the ground and in the air. The easiest option here is surely just ammunition limitation. If the aircraft don't automatically replenish their ammo pool and they're going to be forced out from just patrolling around and around and endlessly engaging ground or air, it gives a bit of respite one way or the other. Having to have those players actually return to base, just go down onto the ground, slow down, spend like a couple of seconds, rearm, take off, it takes that pressure. It creates a bit more of an actual support sense instead of just like this dominating unit, which is just flying around and around, overseeing everything and killing everything in sight. Lastly, there are other options like on rail vehicles, which is always an unpopular choice, but I'm just going to throw it in here for debate nonetheless. Tell me your thoughts, guys, about AI versus human controlled air support in FPS. What works best in what genre and why? How would you better balance this kind of player support? And what do you think in general should be the rules and guidelines when it comes to whether or not it's suitable for a specific type of FPS? Now we come to part two below the line where we look at your comments and thoughts from the previous video where we were discussing should more FPS games have complete unlocked weapon systems right from the outset. Big O says back in BF2 and BF2142 you had very little in the way of unlockable guns and gadgets. Arguably the gameplay was significantly more fun and more challenging. The same with vehicles. Fuck you J10 pilots on Wake Island. <laughs> this gives uh, each team on the map a unique flavour. It also meant that sometimes you'd have crappy guns but usually you'd have a compensating advantage. For example, Chinese infantry weapons were average but the aircraft were better than other factions. That actually ties into what we were just talking about in terms of assisting some kind of balancing system to ground and air. If I had a say, I'd have modern team games like Battlefield have a system like that, but with an insurgency style character squad set up for infantry. All guns are unlocked and if you're in a squad you can choose a role and within that role you can choose from a faction specific selection of weapons, attachments, optics and gadgets. If you're not in a squad, then you get basic gear and little points to spend on parts. If you still want unlocks, make them SF unit uniforms, patched or themed, non-gameplay related gear like character customization. Squad's weapon setup works in a similar way which is also a great example. I feel as if some developers are afraid to bring these sorts of things back into games. I'd like to see the round count go away and the magazine count to return, but that's a reach. Because they're afraid of players leaving. If anything, the last Battlefield games have shown that as long as you don't go completely left field like Hardline, then people are still going to play. It may even be able to retain players if they learn from examples like Squad and Insurgency. COD is pretty much a lost cause, I think most people agree that. In that regard, it's a Twitch shooter and I don't see that changing anytime soon. Yeah, we're not really talking about um, games like COD in that sort of respect. We are talking more about the kind of uh, mainstream arcade games, which I guess just pretty much is Battlefield. And then you've got the more kind of like out and out on the edge of games like Verdun, Tannenberg, um, Squad coming up post Scriptum, Hell Let Loose, all these kind of new ones. Day of Infamy, throw that in there as well. So let's go to Jacob who says, I don't particularly like the unlock progression systems because when I join a match, I want to think that everybody's on a level playing field. And if anything, I like the way games like Insurgency do it where you get so many points to customize your loadout, but there's no unlocking of anything. I agree, I actually really like the point based uh, loadout system for Insurgency. I could see it being more enjoyable having cosmetic unlocks and progression based on your performance, but even then, I wouldn't base that system around specific weapons. For example, I think it's cool if you can have a certain customization of your player based on getting a certain number of wins or playing a certain number of matches or for playing the objective. Even team-based actions have kind of become a nuisance though. In Battlefield 1, for example, sometimes everybody's going to be running with only one class trying to complete whatever assignment they are after, when other classes would actually be more useful. I know for a while everybody was a medic trying to revive people and it got to a point where they were literally racing each other to dead bodies to revive them instead of paying attention to the actual match. The worst though is when everybody's a medic just running around with grenade launches instead of syringes trying to complete assignments and other things like that. It really messes with the balance of classes in a match. I really would rather that everybody in the match is playing the same game, not some people trying to win, some people trying to unlock stuff, and I'd like everybody to be on a level playing field in regards to weapons to begin with. 
Yeah, and I basically totally agree. I mean, it's not just me. Like, even EA and DICE themselves have been kind of trying to think of, like, okay, how can we get people to kind of cooperate more, try to work together more? I think they're well aware of the fact that people generally just kind of zerg forward, just kind of in this big mishmash, and there's very little kind of actual, you know, coordination, cooperation going on. And part of that is just the way the game is designed you know with these kind of progression systems you do have people going into a round with multiple different agendas and they're not all focused on the same things and so you do end up with like we said like i said at the start of this video you got some people in the air like you got a round of 32 players on a side right 64 you're going to have like five or six of those guys perhaps in the air now because of the way the aircraft work potentially right then on the ground you're going to maybe have another 10 people who are probably just trying to complete something and you end up with maybe just sort of you know 15 to 20 people people who are actually really thinking about what they're doing and across a very very big map that's not very many people to actually be focused on and contend with so I think personally it waters down the whole gameplay. Ark says I've always found having to progress in a multiplayer game to be nothing but irritating and off-putting to just let people play the game and have the gameplay itself be good enough. People are going to stick to that game because they enjoy playing the game rather than having to do stuff to unlock the gameplay. Progression to me just encourages destructive gameplay by making players do tasks that they would otherwise not care about to unlock gameplay elements like guns, because otherwise people are going to start complaining about how there's nothing to unlock in the game, whereas the players who are focusing on playing the game get screwed over because their teammates go out of their way to do X thing to get X gameplay element, and therefore it completely ruins gameplay. On the other hand, games that have it all unlocked from the start tend to have more focused players, and therefore the gameplay is much better, and that's what I was saying the other day. Worse still is the possibility of another loot boxes containing gameplay elements, which of course is utter BS. See COD, Black Ops 3, Star Wars Battlefront 2, there is no way I'll play a game where unlocking gameplay elements is based on random chance. Look at Battalion 1944 for example, although it's got mixed popularity, all guns and gameplay elements are unlocked from the start, so you just play and let it be about skill, which by the way, games without progression tend to do better competitively wise than other games do. I mean, here's the thing, I don't out and out completely dislike progression. There was a time where I actually really enjoyed progression, but that's because progression used to be, as I say, quite straightforward. You would play the game, You would the better you did per round, the more you kind of did constructively in a round. You get more points by like healing up teammates, capturing objectives, all these kind of things. So it actually made sense. It was like, hey, if you want to progress faster, you get involved with other people and you do the objectives and you play harder like that. And then it rewards you by actually giving you more XP, which gives you more likelihood of unlocking locking elements and blah 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 you know so it actually used to make sense but now especially with dlc they tie it into all these really weird events and i've had other producers other big producers that i know who have turned around to me and said yeah this thing is fucking stupid i literally got like two or three friends in together and we just kind of you know cheated we boosted to get it that's like that's that's producers that i know who are just going yeah this thing is a fucking nonsense i can't even be bothered with it I mean, really, like, that's just, it's sad, isn't it? It's sad when, you know, developers are putting things into and you have guys who are basically professionally playing the game turn around and be like, yeah, this thing is a fucking ball lake. I'm not even going to try and do it properly. You know, that's just a nonsense, isn't it? It just shows how silly these things really are. Diego says, I'm new to the Battlefield series. I had to buy Battlefield 1 because I've been reading and researching about World War 1 for quite some time. Couldn't believe we were going to get a AAA FPS about the Great War. Ho <laughs> I can understand the weapon unlocking system and the need to extend the game longevity, but I, more often than not, find myself not having any fun playing with a weapon I don't like just so I can unlock one that I think maybe I'll enjoy. It becomes a chore, I still don't have the obrez. And isn't that interesting? This is exactly what I was talking about the other day with Battlefield. I was saying that Battlefield has an issue with player count. It has an issue. Even though it still has a lot of players, the issue is more that players, it's player retention. Players are coming in, new players, they're finding out that actually a lot of the way the game plays in Battlefield and a lot of the things you have to do in Battlefield are actually not that fun. They're kind of a pain in the ass. And it's exactly like I say, people come in, they find these things and they go, oh, fucking hell, like, it's annoying, you know? And as I say, couple that up with other issues, like, for example, you know, the complete complete collapse and deterioration of team play in the game because of their focus constantly on just getting more and more people in. It's, it's basically a false economy. You know, you focus so hard on your marketing, you focus so hard on kind of the accessibility and lowering the kind of actual individual skill gap, and then... Yeah, of course, you get more people in, but because of the type of people that those players are, it actually ends up alienating people, so it's actually kind of counterproductive. Now, Vicerex comes in to say, I seem to be in the minority here, but I typically like a progression system because it gives me a goal, it gives me something to focus on. I play a lot of games as over 500 on Steam, and it takes a lot for a game to stand out among the rest and keep my attention for more than a few days or weeks. 
However, this doesn't mean I only want weapons or attachment unlocks. Sure, those are an option I've enjoyed in the past, but it could also mean mods. Armor 3, for example, has the same guns with the same stats, yet I have almost 1,000 hours into armor because of the various mods you can play on that game. It's extremely versatile, and that's what I love in a game. But most other play games are actually sports games because seasons take a while, especially basketball seasons, which is 82 games, roughly 30 more in playoffs. Even though sports games for the most part are the same year to year, I still have that championship at the end to strive for. It gives me a goal and that's enough to keep me focused, so I end up sinking hundreds of hours into them. I guess my argument isn't so much for weapon unlocks or mods, but just any sort of goal and progression system. Games that don't have any kind of progression system, I barely invest 10 to 20 hours in and then I never touch them again, which in turn makes me feel like I wasted my money, especially if I'm paying a full $60. I mean look, at the end of the day it's subjective and this is the whole point as well different people play for different reasons. Some people want to get in there, they want to get on, they actually want to fight, they want to do it. Some people like a progression system and then they're going to focus on doing that progression system because it's what they like. But you see, that is the whole issue, that's the whole point. It divides people, it splits up the players on the ground, they're all doing different things and ultimately it kind of damages it. It comes back to kind of in a way people saying I paid my money I'll do what I want and that's the issue for me I always feel like it's not constructive to have an element in a game where it divides people's focus where they actually are working towards different goals because the idea of I paid my money I'll do what I want only works for that person because that's their singular point of view they're the only concern the guy who's doing team play the guy who's playing the objective the guy who's you know just fighting for the overall game mode he does get impacted by the guy who's doing whatever he wants because that person may not be contributing at a critical moment etc so basically it's a one-way street and it doesn't work all the way around and that's why I think having overly specific parameters for unlocking weapons and doing achievements and so on and so on like this is not constructive in any shape or form because it just it it buys into that concept that concept of I'm doing what I want and I don't really care about what else is happening and I've done it I've done it rounds we all have you know when you're in a game and you want to unlock a specific weapon you have to do whatever X is required and it's been going on for a long time. I don't even know whether they're going to change it at this point but it is a nonsense. It absolutely detracts from the overall, you know, it just contributes to the poor health of the game. Small says the game within a game is what motivates a lot of gamers to sink hundreds and in some cases thousands of hours into a title. Just winning gets old within the first hundred hours and predominantly losing I'd imagine gets old even quicker. Progression systems and asset unlocks allow players to pursue goal orientated involvement in a game that extends across numerous multiplayer matches rather than limiting a player to be only passionate about what is occurring during a single instance. Now we're going to disagree on this because as I said before, for me, that's not how it should be. You shouldn't have it where those requirements are what keeps people interested in the game. If the only thing that's keeping people's attention and keeping people interested in your game is unlocking X shiny thing, you don't have a game. It's just a broken collection of just vague achievements lined up one after the other. That's not what the core of the game is about. The core of the game is about winning the round. And if you say that the round, if it gets boring after only like a couple of hundred hours, like I say, that's not the, f <laughs> that's, just a, that's just a shit game at the end of the day, because you should have a game which keeps your attention for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours. It should be the mechanics of the gameplay that are drawing. It should be the achievement, the feeling of battling and winning and striving and comparing yourself against other players' skill. Has anybody ever forgotten that that's what you know these kind of games are about? It's about pitting yourself against the other players. It's about outthinking them and flanking and getting around them. It's about outplaying them in those kind of micro tactics in and around objectives. It is not about unlocking shiny things. It is not about going on to the next thing to unlock the next thing to unlock the next thing to unlock the next thing if you want that kind of action and get that kind of gameplay you should go and play like an MMO you should go and play an RPG because RPGs have always been about unlocking tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of items along with their narrative obviously I'm, I'm being a little bit disingenuous there but you know you get the point it's about striving to battle and conquer and fight across an area it's not about unlocking shit Okay, Eric says, like another here have said, I believe it depends on the game. I've been playing Squad ever since it was originally released to the players that helped in Kickstarter or whatever it was. I do enjoy not having to worry about unlocking anything and focusing on the more intense gameplay. In Battlefield, I like having that little extra something to work towards, but in Battlefield 1, I think they overdid it. In BF4, it was literally just use this gun. 
play the objective, maybe do something a little bit off, but nothing out of the ordinary, while well, apart from that whole standing on the tower nonsense. Uh, at Viola, you've got a nice new gun. In Battlefield 1, though, it literally makes you end up being a sitting duck a lot of the time doing weird shit. One of the LMGs in the name of the Tsar, it required you to destroy two planes with an LMG. Let me stare in the sky and shoot a plane and give away my position to everybody on the map. Please know I still did these and have everything unlocked, but this wasn't without any gripe or raging while doing it. Same thing with dog tags and a few other things in this newest DLC. He says I know you technically don't have to do it and just do other five things to unlock, but it has gotten to the point that I'm not playing Battlefield 1. Like you said, I'm playing a game within Battlefield 1. I've reinstalled BF4 and found the same servers I used to before to still be active. I went back to BF4 and man, it is fun. I still have attachment unlocks to complete, but that's just killing people with that particular gun, which for God's sake makes so much more sense. Again, I do like unlocks, I love them. It gives me something small to work towards. That's the key, it needs to be small, it just needs to be incremental, it just needs to be natural. Um, he says something small to work towards while having fun. It stops being fun when they have to do these ridiculous side quests within the game that cause you to be useless for the rest of your team. Yeah, it makes you feel like dead weight, it makes you feel like a dick. Uh, he says usually these guns end up being way superior than the other guns that you've unlocked, which is what I said that's an issue for me with progression in general. And he says he's got no problem with getting so many kills with this weapon, uh, one that isn't used often to unlock this new one, or just play the game for so long and something is unlocked once you reach level 20 or whatever. Yeah, I agree, and, and like I said, I think that personally that's the best way to do these kind of things, is to just allow natural progression, reward you for playing the game, but also why couldn't it be tied way more to objectives and just kind of focusing people to do that kind of thing. I've never really understood why that wouldn't be the case. I suppose because you might end up people like just kind of camping on a point and capping that flag and trying to like whore points um, not too dissimilarly to when we had the uh, mode in Hardline remember where people had to get money and they just found like ways to get around like with the cars for example they'd be just chasing the cars round and round and round and they would still get loads of points and it wasn't technically what they were supposed to be doing. Okay last one for today Pekath who says the game within a game issue has really gotten worse over the years in the Battlefield series. It's not only limited to weapon unlocks but also ribbons, medals and other nonsense. Service stars, achievements that makes people pursue their own personal objectives instead of what the game is actually about, i.e. doing what is best for your team in order to win the match. Yeah, look, let's not forget, you can argue whatever way you want, that is the core mode, just as in like playing football or something, scoring goals and winning is the core objective that you're supposed to be working towards. You know, whatever the mode is, that is the core objective. He says, I'm guilty of this myself, so I know what I'm talking about. In Bad Company 2 and Battlefield 3, I was obsessed in acquiring every possible reward in the game and getting at least one service star with every weapon, no matter how damn useless I was for my team. Eventually though, I realized it just doesn't make any sense to play the Battlefield games like that, and that I was even possibly ruining the experience of others who actually play for the win and teamwork above all. I would say that is incredibly laudable to have come to that conclusion. In BF4, I started to play with a new mindset, and unlocking weapons became became a burden instead of being a reason to play the game, but once I got it over with, not all weapons and gadgets but just those that are mandatory to play the game, I noticed that playing the game is actually a lot more fun and rewarding that way. I could really focus on just playing the game without any mini games within it so to speak, and it just felt so much better. So to answer the question whether guns should be unlocked right from the start or if they should be earned via progression, I definitely choose the former option, however most players seem to demand some kind of in-game progression, the kind that doesn't even require being actually any good at the game, so it's very unlikely that unlocking guns is going to go away. I just wish all the ridiculous requirements for them would be gone and they'd all be tied to actions that actually improve the game. Wow, that's such like an amazingly novel concept. If only someone had been telling them that for like years. Yeah, we've been talking about this for a long time. Playing matches from start to finish, winning the match, being at the top 15% of your team's scoreboard, performing team oriented actions, repairs, resupplies, revives, heals, following orders, giving orders, spotting, attacking, defending, and on and on and on. This is all stuff that I have told them over and over again in emails, in sending messages, posting on Twitter, talking about in videos. I've been talking about this for literally like four, five years now. Anyway, that's where we come to the end of this week's Below the Line, guys. I hope you've enjoyed. Please think about today's topic, that of air superiority, about air control, air support. Should it have AI? Should it be just balanced better? What's the best solution, not just for Battlefield, but for other games as well? Other games which might seek to include some kind of air combat. Could be squad, could be postscriptum, could be hell at loose. Basically, any FPS which seeks a kind of like wider experience than some kind of 6v6. Basically, something which requires teams working together and requires some kind of support element bringing in. Tell me your thoughts about this down below guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time for more Below the Line.